any mathematical model needs to be validated experimentally. And we're here in the laboratories of the International Tennis Federation. And here, here I am with Dr. Stuart Miller. Uh, and we've helped you over the years develop a few machines. And here's a, a racket power machine, which is there to mimic always uh, worked at how we wanted. Now, why would we even want a machine like this? because of the way in which tennis racket technology is changing. For many, many years, all rackets were the same size. They were 27 inches long and nine inches wide. But when Howard Head found that you could make rackets out of different materials that were bigger, longer, wider than the old wooden rackets, then the ITF decided that it better write some rules for tennis rackets. So we've got a rule for the racket, and then sometimes other things come up, like, like spin, for instance. So um, what expense have we got for that? Once you've found out how the ball comes off the racket in terms of speed, you need to know the amount of spin that's generated as well. And this device here allows us to quantify the amount of spin that different racket and string combinations can generate. So we've got spin. What next? Well, then we need to know how that spin affects the flight of the ball through the air. So that means we go to the wind tunnel. Indeed. Lead on. Me. Lead on. Wow, I've forgotten how beautiful this thing is. It's like a space shuttle or a rocket or something. So if we open up the working section here, right, so we've got our ball on a little axle here. So it's a while since I've looked at this. Can you remind me of the specifications of this wind tunnel? It simulates the aerodynamic effects and measures those aerodynamic characteristics for balls travelling up to 160 miles per hour, which is just a little bit faster than the fastest serve that's ever been recorded. It also allows us to spin the ball at speeds of up to 6,500 revolutions per minute, which is just a bit faster than the fastest spin rate that's ever been recorded. So that means with this device, we can simulate just about any tennis shot that can be generated. Now, the spin rate has gone up since we first uh, developed this. So that's changed. What, what other things might change in tennis? Well, really, we're not sure because that's in some ways up to the manufacturers. But what we can do through these experiments is assess the effects of those changes. And when we put them together in tennis gut, that allows to, to, us to predict what might happen in the future and to protect the nature of the game. The grand unified theory is just a model of reality. And we can use the physics to understand what is going on. Equipment manufacturers would love to get their hands on the model, but the ITF is using it to preserve the balance between the tradition and technology within the game. Now, Tennis Gut has shown us the way forward, and we can use the same modelling techniques and the way it's used for any sport.